Ladies, did you know that your ability to live and feel authentically feminine is connected to your sexual power? Gentlemen, have you ever wondered what's behind those days when she seems to shine from within? If you answered yes to either of those questions, stay tuned for The O Spot with best-selling romance author Rachel Kenley and get to the source of your power so you are living a life of greater connection and joy. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the O Spot. I'm your host, Rachel Kenley. Today is Wednesday, April 20th, and I, as you know, have a special guest. Joining me today is the fabulous and talented author, Stephanie Ivanovich. Stephanie, can you hear me and can we hear you? Hello. 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 Okay, okay. See what I did there? Yes, we can hear you. It's the O spot. It's the O spot, yes. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Rach. Hi, Steph. How you doing? <laughs> Steph is in my beauteous home state of New Jersey. Represent. <laughs> Which is where we met. We actually met at the Liberty States Writers Conference two or three years ago. I know. It seems like yesterday, right? It does. It does. My kids yeah, are... I feel like I've known you forever. <laughs> it was. It was funny. My mother, my mother was attending that conference as well. And she had said to me, actually, she says, How do you when did you two meet? I'm like about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know good people when I see them. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. I'm I'm proud to say that my entire Stephanie Ivanovich collection is autographed. <laughs> Probably at nauseum. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think you want to use it as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not that bad. No, no, it's heavy. All right, I'm going to take a cough drop because, you know, I just came off tour. And I can't, I, like, as soon as I came off tour, I got this, like, outrageous, like, upper respiratory kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it played into, I had said when I got off tour, I was going to sleep for a week. Because I was on the road for almost a month. That was a long and, tour. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, infection kind of played into that nicely. So, I apologize in advance if I cough. Yikes. Yeah, I, I'm usually, I'm prone, I know, for like many people to what we fondly refer to as conference crud. Conference oh, crud. <laughs> yes. That lovely cold you get about two to three days after you've been in a conference and hugged way too many people. Yeah, or felt that like little, you know, if you take an airplane and they have that little, um, you know, air thing. Yeah. Like that's just pumping germs on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my husband tried to turn one on. He went with me to Texas, and uh, he turned the little knob. And I was like, did you take your finger off that knob? <laughs> like, oh, whoa, what did I do? Like, you don't fly enough, but you stop it right now. <laughs> really, I, th I think from now on when I do a swag bag and, and give things away, I'm giving out Airborne or something like that or vitamin oh, C. Idea. I thought you were going to say, like, a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I could find a way to tie it into my... My Here's story. A surgical mask. Thank <laughs> you for buying my book. <laughs> really, you know, if I weren't medical thrillers, maybe that would work. <laughs> you know? uh, 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 yeah. Is this one of the dangers of when two authors talk? Yes. Everything becomes potential uh, fodder for a storyline. Absolutely. You know, it's Absolutely. funny. People ask me, and I'm sure they ask you this too. You know, when did you know you wanted to be a writer, or for how long did you know? And I. My honest answer is always, you know, I can't tell you exactly when, but I must have said it at some point in college because I can remember several conversations where people said, this isn't going to end up in a book, is it? Yeah. Well, uh, you never answered honestly, did no, you? No, I just no. smiled. I didn't answer you, at all. You, you should kind of leave them on edge because that keeps them reading just to make sure that they haven't shown up. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. You know what? And the truth is, I was talking. Um, my actual writing started um, for anybody else to see, other than like my closest friends. Do you remember um, back in like the early, you know, turn of the millennium and the late '90s when um, you would join groups? I had like you would join an email group, like mm -hmm. you could get that immediate gratification with your group. Yes. It was all done through emails and you just like subscribe to this group. Yeah, link serves. 
I was in a group with, um, like, for some reason, I had, when I saw the movie The Patriot, I must have been going through my bad boy phase. <laughs> I really got this thing for, like, Tavington, who was the bad guy in The mm-hmm. Patriot, you know, that movie with Mel Gibson? Yep. And I actually wrote my first, I think, public writing was, like, fan fiction for this Patriot Tavington group. <laughs> Just an interesting memory. I don't know. Came flood back again. Nowhere. You haven't strayed too far from the bad boys. There are quite yeah. a few in your books. Bad boy. They're a lot more fun, you know. They they are one of um one of my um favorite books from many many years ago, and and she writes a very different genre now. Was Kristen Hanna's book If Lightning Strikes? Oh. And the, 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 the heroine is a writer of romance novels who gets zapped into her own novel and discovers that her hero is boring and that she kind of has the hots for her villain, although she does keep saying, when I get back, I have to write you better dialogue. <laughs> wow. And how does that, like, did it, like how did it play out? Like, so- um, she's able to get back and she's able to bring him with her somehow. The bad boy? Yes. Oh, all right. Put him out of his element a little bit. And, uh, okay, you know, I'm going to have to check that out. That one's fun. Her writing now is more, she moved into women's fiction and then into her most recent book is actually very serious and is a historical fiction set during World War II. The Nightingale, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good book. It is a very good book, but it's, you know, it's not one of the, <laughs> it's really not good bedtime reading. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And you know what? And, and I have to shamefully say that I haven't read it, even though I've heard so many wonderful things about it for that very reason. Yep. Is that I can't, um, you know, I, I, I'm a feeler. So I end up taking that stuff to bed and, you know, I think about it and yeah. Yeah, I'm the like same that. way. <laughs> I, there's certain books I can read and certain books I can't and and mo- at bedtime. And that's so much of my reading time. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's a good percentage of it. Um, thanks to thanks to baseball season, I'm reading at the ballpark these days. Oh, okay. Oh, and, what are you uh, like, are, are you going? Like, are you mom on the mom on the bleachers? I am actually. <laughs> I'm mom on the folding chair because, you know, I am not built for sitting on bleachers for too long. Yeah, they're a rough, they're a rough ride. <laughs> Between the f- cold, flat bottom and the no back. And the occasional splinter in the seat of your jeans. Ugh, yeah. yeah. Depends yeah, no, on. Folding chairs are as roughing it as I get. I get it. And then, you know what? You got the little cup holder. Yes. So that all works out. Yeah, you got to plan those things if you're going to be, <laughs> you know. I was a baseball mom. Mm-hmm. And uh, I loved it, you know. You know when it was rough, like right around now when the nights are still kind of cold? Yes. Before it gets really warm, like those games that you start playing at like 5, 6 o'clock where it started to get cold. Yes. That, you know, that was a little uncomfortable. As but... soon as the sun goes down, the gloves, yep. you know, my, my I keep gloves in the baseball bag. It took me like five years to realize, you know what, I didn't need to suffer. I could just bring a blanket. <laughs> I have one that stays in the car just about all year long. See? See? You know it. You know the drill. Yeah. Well, you know, either it's good for the beach or it's good for the baseball game or it's good for, you know, warming up somewhere. Oh, the beach. You're going to come down to the shore? That's, you know, I, the woods. The beach. I have to come down to the shore. So it's for those good. of you who are listening and don't realize, the shore is only in one place. It's in New Jersey. It is the Jersey Shore. It is just the shore. You go to it or down to it, you know. If we want to really bother, like us locals, if we really want to bother, like, the visitors, mm-hmm. we'll call it the beach and get <laughs> to this big debate as to whether or not you call it the shore or the beach. And uh, I used to drive my cousins who live just a little bit further up north in Jersey uh, I used to torture them. With, <laughs> you know, they would say the shore, and I'd go, oh, you mean the beach? And they were like, oh, the shore, you know, and it, <laughs> it would escalate. <laughs> Gee, I never realized I was such like a devil's advocate, but I guess that's true. It's do now. My sons refer to it as the shore. They prefer yeah. the boardwalk to just about anything, and turns out... Where do you out... guys go? I'm sorry? Where do you guys go? I grew up going to Belmar. 
Through Belmar. Okay. I um, lived in Belmar for. Uh, but I have to tell you, the last time we were there was Asbury Park. It was your neck of the woods. Asbury Park is coming back. I love it. In a very major way. And it's kind of sad because for a while it was like it had kind of a reputation of being, you know, a bit run down. And mm -hmm. um, it was really the best kept secret because the beaches have been beautiful for a long time. And now the word is getting back out. And, you know, with the good word comes the great crowds, which are great for tourism. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little trying for the locals who, you know, want their parameter of sand around their chair. <laughs> yes, exactly. And nobody up, nobody up here knows from Zeppeli. What? I know, it's awful. I, I'm working on a book right now where I have a mermaid who comes on land on the Jersey Shore. And when I was writing it, even Microsoft Word didn't know the word. You gotta be kidding me. It was terrible. You know what? We had when I like I um I grew up um in Ocean Township, which is right near Asbury, and that's actually where I grew up. We share a zip code with Asbury. Mm -hmm. They have an Italian festival mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And they've had this since I was like twelve years old. So this thing's been very long. Um yes. and all it is is in this big open field. It's like a beer wagon and some kitty rides and some games and, of course, sausage and peppers. And the Zeppeli line is like around the per like the Zeppeli the Zeppeli line is always long and um, always good. Yeah, we would send the kids just to like go get the Zeps. But you know what? You can't leave your zeps in a bag too long. Or no, it gets all coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're up to our first break. Hopefully my music will start up. There it is. If not, I'll sing. Music. All right, come back for the second section, our oh no section on the O spot here with Rachel Kenley and my special guest, Stephanie Ivanovich. Yay, come back. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Welcome back to the O Spot. I'm your host, Rachel Kenley, and with me tonight is New York Times bestselling author Stephanie Ivanovich, whose most recent book is The Total Package. Awesome. It is. I love your titles. You you get you 
get great titles. You know what? I can't really take credit for Big Girl Panties or the Total Package. I can, however, take credit for the sweet spot. Oh, good. Which I threw out there just to look like I was participating. <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, I, I, the sweet spot is like about a baseball player mm-hmm. with a spanking fetish. So, um, you know, I kind of thought that was like a cool play on words, but I never thought they would go for it. So when they were like, yes. I was like, what? (laughs) Well, it is. It's a very good play on words. Yeah. And and the sweet spot goes so well with the O spot. (laughs) I think so. That's why we're here, ain't it? It is. It is. Now, you mentioned, you know, you have a hero with a spanking fetish. That's not an easy thing to, no pun intended, slip into mainstream, you know, women's fiction. You know what? I think that um, when I first saw Big Girl Panties, um, I had like the, the characters, uh, from the sweet spot were actually in, like the sweet spot is a prequel actually to big girl panties because, uh, these two characters started stealing the book. And it was like at that perfect, um, you know, moment in time when the whole 50 shades of gray was mm-hmm. taking off and, uh, you know, publishers were looking for that kind of edgy, you know, they wanted to all capitalize on that market. So I sort of fell into it at, you know, like the perfect time. Mm -hmm. But um, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing dark about my hero in the sweet spot. Like he really didn't have a problem with it. Like there was no angst over what he, you know, was doing. He just was like, if you don't like it, then, you know, we don't need to be together. And he just stumbles upon the girl that he fell in love with who turned out to like it more than he did. (laughs) And he almost didn't know what to do with it because he was just, you know, so smitten with her. And, um, you know, it's funny. When I get, um, sometimes I get, you know, the occasional uh, disgruntled uh, disgruntled reader letter. Mm -hmm. And it's usually about the sweet spot. And, um, you know, I feel kind of bad because every, you know, they, they don't usually... You know, they're not angry about the writing. They're not angry about, you know, like, they're angry about the fact that this woman is choosing to like something that maybe they don't like. I got, you know, I'll get an email that says, you know, hitting a woman is never okay. And that's true, unless she likes it and she wants it. And she should be okay with that. Yeah, there's no, in, you know, people forget the difference between intent. You know, he's not intending to hurt or harm, well, hurt possibly, but not harm. Yeah, no. And in fact, I just wanted to, you know, for the sake of the book, you know, that first one is is non-consensual because, you know, his whole dilemma was, I don't know how to tell this girl because I'm afraid of scaring her off, which she had already subconsciously tapped into him. Mm-hmm. and you know, was already starting to act like they were starting to play the roles before she even knew it. And, you know, at that point he, he apologized and was like, you know, this is who I am. And she chose to stick with him and because she liked it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, you know, and, and you say, you know, you're a writer, so you're not supposed to engage. People are allowed to have their opinions. And, you know, I don't read my reviews, but if you're going to email me, I, I open the email. I don't know what I'm going to get. So, you know, I see it and I try not to take it personally, but you can't engage. So it's not like I really ever write back to debate it because people are allowed to feel what they feel. But at the same time, I'm kind of sad because, you know, in no way was the heroine in um, the sweet spot, you know, not making her own decisions. Like this was all in her control. In fact, she was the one with all the power. Yes. See, this is what people, you know, anybody who's never, um, you know, engaged in any sort of power exchange of, uh, you know, in a sexual relationship. And by the way, if you're in a relationship, trust me, there's there's power exchange. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we do. We get told that, you know, this is wrong or it shouldn't be like that or don't like this or do like that. And then if you want something else... I mean, I'm glad your hero wasn't over-tortured. I mean, Christian Grey could just 
He's a little well, over-tortured. That, that, that was the only, you know what, I, I liked Fifty Shades. I read them all, and I enjoyed them, and I loved the movie, too, actually. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want all that angsty, you know? Yeah. He was tortured, and I felt bad. Like, I was like, and that's why I wanted the sweet spot to be written, because I really did want a lighter side of it, that it's allowed to be fun, and it's allowed, you know, you're allowed to choose it and not feel bad. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, it, and it doesn't need to be that you're, you know, being tied up and suspended from the ceiling. But if you're into that, that should be okay too. Yes, and and again, you know, women and we we get told you you know we get so many mixed messages about how you know, and men are too now. You know, you need to get consent, but if you're not going to be clear about what you want, then you're not going to be clear about giving consent is going to be that much harder. I agree. And I think that's where, you know, the lines sometimes get blurred. I feel bad for kids today because now they're saying, you know, you have to be like every 10 minutes, do you still want this? You know, yeah. like, I can't think of anything less romantic than having to every 10 minutes confirm that, yeah, I've, I've made my choice and I still want to go through with it. You know, right? yeah, it's, it, it's the, it's... I want to be like, could you just shut up so I can have my orgasm? Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, I, I just come already. Up. <laughs> it's, it's ironic that the the area that brought this up the whole kink community or the bdsm community have you wondered we've been talking about consent forever yeah i mean we're always looking to consent and watching to see if there's a change in our partner um or in ourselves you know because you know what feels good one day doesn't feel good the next you know you were talking about having a sore throat and stuff when i have a cold ugh, touch does not feel good don't don't hug me. Just give me oh, chicken soup and chocolate. I can't even stand someone breathing near me when I'm not feeling well. Right. Yeah. Right. I get it. It's important to be able to say, you know, every occasionally I see little things that people don't realize. I'm like, give grandma a hug or let grandma hug you. I'm like, guys, that is a very mixed message to send to a child. Yeah, I've never, you know what? I never took my kids to like, I, I took them once to see Santa Mm-hmm. And they weren't into it. And I was like, you don't need to be into it. I don't need a picture with you and Santa. If you don't want to be on a, you know, creepy old man's lap, <laughs> I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board. Yeah. It is little creepy when you stop stuff. and think about it. That's where it begins. And and it's funny that you mess, you know, you, you uh, mess, mentioned the uh, BDSM community. Because if there is anyone who is tapped in to consent, it's that community. Yes. Like all of those people, because as I was doing the research, you know, it's all about safe, sane, and consensual. Mm -hmm. But women don't need to feel bad to like that. And it's funny because in the sweet spot, I kind of, you know, not to give any, you know, part of the story away, but, you know, she, she, our, our, our heroine is, is kind of disturbed by all of it. And, you know, the fact that their secret is out. And um, because he's a famous guy. Right. He runs, you know, she runs into like an an old, an older woman who was like, you know, people are tattooing themselves like a tattoo hurts. Yes. He's outlawing tattoos. Like I watch my son after he gets a tattoo and he looks like he's been through. I have one son who has one tattoo. And was like, that's enough. And I have another one that is slowly going to be covered. I think <laughs> he's 30. And the fact is, they're incredibly painful. Yes. But he's, and I would never, and I, that is not my choice. I got my ears pierced and I thought that was enough for me. But what is so different? You go to somebody who literally hurts you. Mm-hmm. For art. Permanently or, modifies you know, your body and you pay them. And you pay them. Well, you know, you can pay them to, you know, spank you too. Yes, you can. That's, that's a different conversation. But, you know, the point is that consent is is the cornerstone of that community. And I, I get a little I get a little angry when I hear it getting a bad rap. I, I'm the same way. And it's interesting, too, that one of the things that started to happen most recently about that is the truth is, you know, the, the, as, as you mentioned, the safe, sane, consensual. First of all, 
it, you know, any relationship, safe and sane is a judgment call because let's face it, getting involved with anybody, opening up your heart, being vulnerable, that could be considered insane. Well, um, and there's a lot of ways to abuse a person. Absolutely. And many of them don't include ever laying a hand on them. And exactly. You can pull them to the ground. Absolutely. There are lots of relationships that are unsafe and you need to know how to look at that. And then as far as, you know, consent, just because, you know, yes, it's a very big part because we're we're asking to do something, you know, a little bit out of the ordinary. But the truth is consent should be there. Regu- you know, if you know what you is there regularly, if you haven't given consent. Well, there's a reason there are safe words. Yes. In that community, because you can change your mind and yes. you can all of a sudden not like what's going on. And all you do is say that word and it's over. We're very used to it. And I think that's one of the things I, I, I've told this story. I have friends who have discovered they have a partner or a husband or a wife who is into this and it freaks them out. And what I've discovered is freaking them out more than the concept of, oh my God, do I have to go get, you know, whips and chains and latex outfits is how much communication this is going to require. It requires a very important level of vulnerability and intimacy and trust. Yeah, trust. Uh, that is a bigger risk than getting spanked for most people. Um, yeah. Especially if you have a partner who can't handle what you're saying to them. Yeah. And then, like, you're sort of both in the dark but from different angles. And that's why it's a partnership. And you're with someone you trust so that you can, you know, get through it. I don't know. That's what and I you think. need to be confident enough. This is a place where, you know, we were talking about the oh no section of, you know, the myths. You need to be connected enough to what you do and don't like and then confident enough to say something. Yeah. And that's a very difficult dichotomy for a lot of people and, and sadly for too many women. Oh, and here comes the music sure. again. So come on back after the break because next is oh yes. On the other spot. <laughs> the Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Music. <laughs> Welcome back to the O Spot. Stephanie, are you still here? Do I of still course. Here? Oh, good. Phew. Every now and then I worry the technology is going to do something funky on me. Well, you know, you better not. I just knocked on wood because, uh, you know, now that you've said it, it's going to vanish. Absolutely. Now, for those of you who haven't yet indulged, Stephanie has a thing for hot sports guys. Well, Logan is a trainer. He's not necessarily a sports guy, but to, in my mind, he is. I think so, too. Yeah. And and awesomely, they all have a little bit of a connection, which I like, because um, as we were talking earlier, like you, I'm a bit of a feeler, a bit. <laughs> look, look what I write and do for a living. Um, and it's so cool just to be able to kind of peek back in and see, you know, a couple that you saw get together in an earlier book still together. Um, you know what, people really, they when I wrote Big Girl Panties, um, some people really connected to Holly and, um, were rooting. There were some people that really didn't like Logan because he was a bit of a jerk, but I, I'm, I, you know what, I like to, I like to write flawed people, mm-hmm. especially dudes, because, uh, to me, women have it all over dudes. Like, we only let them run the world because we can't be bothered with the mess. So, uh, <laughs> Um, so people really connected to her and, you know, what I was getting a lot of requests to continue their story, but it wasn't my intention when I started the total package, it just sort of happened organically. And, uh, I thought that was really neat. That is, that's even better you yeah. know, that, you know, it's just a case of, well, here's our new hero Tyson going through hell. If you haven't read it yet. Stephanie puts poor Tyson through hell. Well, he puts she put you put both of them through hell, but Tyson goes through a very special kind of hell. He did. And um, you give the reader. I like this. You gave the reader a lot of time with him at the beginning. I like writing about that. You know, when I it was a reader, um, and this is just my personal opinion. I liked I liked knowing more about the guy than I did about the female protagonist. Mm-hmm. So when I started writing, you know, I want to hear about the guy who can't live without the girl mm. you know, and picture the girl as me. So whatever. Oh, um, I always picture the girl as me. This is, absolutely. you know, it does not matter what the, how the author describes the heroine. She looks like me. Yep. That's why I try really to not go into, um, with big girl panties, they actually asked for a little more description. Um, on Holly, mm-hmm. so I, I gave it, but I really wanted anyone to picture themselves as Holly. And that's funny, you know, that we bring it up that I, I mention it because when I was doing promotion for Big Girl Panties, mm-hmm. there were I never at any time. And if, if you haven't read Big Girl Panties, our female protagonist is a woman who is a widow and basically turned to food and was trying to get her way out of it. So. At no time did I ever say how much she weighed when she started or how much she weighed when they got together or how much she weighed at the end of, you know, Big Girl Panties. Mm -hmm. It was amazing how many people needed to ascribe a number to her. Mm. That she was X amount of weight. Like, I only mentioned at one point that she was, I think, like 78 pounds over what was acceptable even to her. And at no time did I ever say she was this amount of weight that, and people really needed to kind of have that missing piece. And I found that very interesting. Yeah. It's now it's, it's, I would be curious to find out now, did they make her heavier than them or did they make her lighter than they were? Because we do, we see ourselves in characters, and at least we hope to, but do we want to feel better than them, or do we think they're better than us? Or do we somehow gauge our own, you know, do we gauge our own yeses and nos by the people around us? Mm. Do you know what I mean? I do, and I think I'm old. You know what? I'm I'm not a young spring chicken anymore, and, and I've been married for 30 years, and 
you know, my husband and I, we're, I think we're in it till the very end. So I don't need to be out there like playing the field and stuff, but you know what? And I'm a big girl and I can remember, you know, in my younger days, looking, going someplace and, and thinking, as long as there's somebody bigger than me, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that with maturity and, you know, self assurance and life experience that I can abandon that way of thinking because I think it probably was a lot of unnecessary uh, damage to my own psyche that I don't think women should be doing to themselves. But I think we all do. I agree. And it's something that I tell women or I tell friends, you know, this is one of the big gifts of getting older. And that is one of them is just kind of being okay in your skin. Even if you're looking to make it a, you know, thinner or stronger or healthier, just, you know, you, you well, first of all, you start to realize that, well, today's the youngest I'm ever going to be again. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Rachel, this is supposed to be the happy part of the show. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> And you know what I also would just love to say, and, and, you know, I, I never once, like I married, you know, my mother was always trying to get me to lose weight, which of course was always going to backfire and it always will. And the fact was, you know, my mother was like, you know, if you don't get, if you don't lose weight, you're never going to get a boyfriend. Well, I brought home the captain of, you know, the baseball team and (laughs) basketball team. Well, you know what? If you don't lose weight, he's never going to marry you. Well, he did. You know, and then it was if you don't, uh-uh. and if you don't lose weight, he's never going to stay with you. It's thirty years, and I can't get rid of him. So <laughs> uh, I always believed that I was worthy and I was special, and that came from my friends' parents more than my own. And my, you know, my my folks are wonderful. That it's not about that. Sometimes you just have to reach out and and branch out and you start to learn from other people in your environment. And that the, the weight thing was always a bone of contention in my house. And luckily I got a lot of positive reinforcement from different avenues. And that made me a really strong woman, but it's really mental because long before the baseball captain, you know, brought me home, I, I didn't have a problem. Like I met guys all the time. I still do. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they say that it's mental and it's true. And it's a huge, you like yourself, people will, will be attracted to you. Yes. Because people want to feel good. It's true. And this is an amazing example. Steph and I both have sons. We're, we're both in the outnumbered club. Um, we, you know, we get to keep the bathroom, but uh, forget the remote right. um, if, if we're going by stereotypes. Um, but it's, a, you know, a lot of people say, you know, and I get comments about what I write and what I talk about, you know, that it's good for women. I'm like, you don't understand. This is important for men, too, because we want to be the women our, 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 our sons grow up to choose. We want them to choose women who believe themselves worthy Um in every way, who don't judge themselves harshly, who who keep an open heart, um, it's a huge gift to you know for our sons to see and for your sons to see how self accepting you are and how strong you are because of that. Yeah, I, I it's I don't think you realize just what an impact it has until you're almost looking behind mm-hmm. and it's over, you know, because you know what your kids grow fast. Oh God, yeah, I'm 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 not long for in about a couple of months. I'm going to be the shortest one in the house. That's, uh, I'm surprised you're not already. Yeah. Max is at that precipice. You know, I can kind of see all the little things. You know, the feet are starting to grow and a couple of those things, and then he's going to shoot up, and the pants are all going to suddenly be shorts. And yeah, my second baby was born ten one. You know, like ten pounds one ounce. Whoa! Yeah, and one push. One tribal yell and one mighty push, and he was out. And, um, I knew it was only a matter of time. And now he's literally like six and a half feet tall. He's 24, six and a half feet tall, and has a beard that, you know, Grizzly Adams would be envious of. Ooh. I, I should have known that was coming because his, his favorite during Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was always Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he liked the beards even then. Yeah, my older son the same way. He has a thing for the the Raleigh fingers, mustache, 
Oh my gosh. And also in the Hunger Games movie, uh, the Game Master, Seneca, that very sculpted, funky beard. Yeah. He loves that. He just thinks it's great to be able to do that. He can't, oh, my he's at that borderline where he can't quite shave yet, but I can see that it's it's about to come. But he's he's closing in on 5'11", and uh, he's all muscle. Yeah. Um, and, and their confidence, you know, it's, I, you know, it's, it is linked to ours. It's, it's one of those, you know, the things that we try to do for our children, you know, we try to, to give or do, but this is some, it's a way to be. Right. And you know, what was important. Uh, you know, I just have to say, <coughs> excuse me. My husband was very conscious that, um, I, I do for me too. Like I need to have stuff that is just mine mm. or my pursuits outside of the family. And he really believed that that would make me a better mother. And he was right. And I'm glad I listened to him. I mean, I, I don't think I was ever not going to have something that was for me. That was, but, you know, that's a huge thing. I always get people are always very, C- confused that my husband and I are not attached. We'll be married almost 20 years. Atta- we're not attached to the hip. We didn't even spend every minute together on our honeymoon. Yeah. We were in London. He wanted to go to record stores. I wanted to go to bookshops and boutiques. We'd split up. We'd come back together for tea. We're still like that. Yep. And it, and, and it makes you both better parents. But it does. It actually confuses Ethan's, up. my son's a girlfriend who, um, Kind of, she's at that age where you know she wants the very constant texts and stuff like that. And he's like, you know, we can have space, and I can still care about you just as much. <laughs> but it, it's important. We never, you know, I think I think one of the things that's very I know is important for me is that we don't we don't forget the things that made us happy in the midst of doing all this other stuff for other people. Yep, that's huge. Oh, there's the music again. Oh. Time flies when you're having fun. I know. Wait, wait, we still have 15 more minutes. Well, we have like 11 or 12 minutes when you guys come back after this break here on the O Spot. Come back, come back. Come back, come back. (laughs) (laughs) The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hey ladies, do you want to have that good hair day feeling all the time? Gentlemen, would you want your special someone to have that glow, letting you know she is feeling completely satisfied? This feeling and that glow can be yours by embracing your sexual power. So join me, Rachel Kenley, award-winning romance author, on The O-Spot. The O-Spot will guide you to that peak with guest interviews, book discussions, and conversations on the thrills of sexual empowerment. Put the zing back in your life. Come up and see me sometime on The O-Spot, live on Hump Day at 10 p.m. Eastern. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs-Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Your Conscious Connection to a more mindful world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to our final section, our Oh Wow on the O Spot. I'm your host, Rachel Kenley. 
And with me tonight is Stephanie Ivanovich, who's trying not to cough off the lung. And yeah. she just pointed out to me, the more she tries not to cough, the more she does. And I can tell you, my listeners know, I had about three weeks with a cough that it just wouldn't go away. I could go a whole day with almost no coughing, and then I'd start to talk about it here, and there I'd go again. Well, you know what happened was I think these great eucalyptus cough drops that are great until the air, like the cold air from the eucalyptus, mm-hmm. like goes into your throat and makes you more cough. So yes. that's like epic fail, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> but we'll get through it, because now I got water. There you go. Water, chicken soup. Ooh, chicken soup. Chicken soup. Hey, Chocolate, because, you know, even if it doesn't work, who cares? Hey, happy Passover, by the way, because I want to talk to you. And then... Thank you, yes. Passover is late this year. We start Friday night. It is. My sister actually converted, so um, I, I'm kind of half Catholic, half Jewish. Hey. That, I carried a Torah. That's plenty of guilt to go around. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> well, I have a friend who's, you know, she's a she's a, a, a Italian Catholic girl from Long Island, and here I am, you know, a nice Jewish girl from New Jersey, and really, there's like no difference. Right now, mm, it's, it's all the same, except for what gets served for dinner on the weekends. There's some okay. difference there, maybe. And Passover. And Passover. Yeah. Yes, the the my the, yeast. Oh, I'll tell you, I actually saw this year they have gluten free matzah. I think you may as well just eat the box get out of town like i you know what i bet they're lying like, that they would be funny. Gluten-free. <laughs> but there's a gluten, gluten-free matzo i'm like you know we did not wander in the desert for 40 years to eat gluten-free matzo <laughs> and it's funny because if you have to eat it for eight days you do not eat it any other time of year yeah you just you know what enjoy the matzo get, get the get the gluten-filled matzo yeah and and the chocolate covered Matzo. Now you're talking. Yeah, my 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 brother's sweetie. She makes one. She covers it and it gets. She puts like caramel on it and then chocolate on it and it's. It's hardly matzo anymore. It's sort of a, a chocolate caramel delivery system. You know what? I I don't know that my chocolate and caramel would ever make it to the matzo. Yeah, no, there's that. Like chocolate should be a food group on its own. <laughs> chocolate, caffeine, carbs. And uh, cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger. Oh. Yeah, I'm a big cheeseburger fan. I'm a, you know what? Every time I, like, when I was on tour, I had to drive from um, Virginia to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And um, there was lots of farmland and stuff. And I was, you know, I was driving and I looked over and there was this huge, like, you know, it had to have been hundreds of acres. And there were all these pretty white I guess cows. I don't mm-hmm. know if they were cows or bulls or whatever. And, you know, I was admiring them. And, you know, I finally got to like the middle of the property and realized that it was a, you know, beef farm for there lack of a better word. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't look at them for like the other half of the pasture because I was like, I'm so sorry, my delicious friends. Yes. <laughs> you're adorable, but you're good. You're yummy. And you know what, you're right, and the, you know, we talked about this, you know, guilty pleasures and the things that, you know, that make us happy. And I got to say, you know, a good cheeseburger, there's just something about it. I've, I've learned to appreciate that with, with sons who are hardcore carnivores. Yeah. Um, but we've gone to some of the places we've seen on the Travel Channel to try out their burgers. And we were out in uh, Las Vegas and we went to In-N-Out Burger, which... Ah, only at West and everybody raves about. So I was in Cleveland, um, this tour with a librarian friend of mine who was also like a major chef mm-hmm. and I made him go to steak and shake because I had never been to a steak and shake. Yeah. Um, you know, he indulged me because he's my buddy, but at the same time, he was probably like, Oh my gosh, all the places I could be taken us. <laughs> want a burger, whatever. You gotta try these things, though. They're they're simple they're, they're, pleasures. Come on, absolutely, and they're important. I mean, one of the things we talk about in this section is always, you know, what can we do to make our lives feel, you know, more fun, more joyous, more connected to what we desire. And no, I'm not advocating going out and going on a cheeseburger binge. However, 
you know, when you plan for something like this or you, you eat it with the intention of this is going to be so good. Yeah. You know, and New Jersey gets things before we get them up here in New England. So five guys, the first time I went was down in New Jersey and Wegmans. Oh my word. Yep. Yeah. Five Wegmans guys. down in New Jersey oh. was first and. Now that you're talking about five guys, I actually like want, you know, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to go to bed. But <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, before I forget, I'm going to thank Stephanie for staying up so late for us. I know. I actually got a little bit of work done. I did a little bit of writing. Yay! Well, now, are there any characters from the first three books in the next one? No. In <gasps> fact, this, this I- new one is a, I, I'm actually writing it in first person. Ooh. From uh, the female protagonist's point of view. And we're going to have a younger man in this one. Yes, that is, that's fun. You know, actually, was... I think I read one of your books and, and I, I apologize that the title's escaping. I want to say Geek Experience. That's the one. Yep. Yeah. Um, you've got a younger man going on in that one. I do. And I, I love it. So I hope you don't think I'm stealing from you. Oh, yeah. Right. No, no. And it's a great thing, too, because it's I people ask, you know, there's so many of the, of the editors, so many of the New York editors are these 20 something year olds and they really don't know quite what to do with 30 and God forbid, 40 year old uh, heroines. And yet the country is getting older, <laughs> you know, by percentages. And, you know, when we, when we want to I mean, don't get me wrong, we we enjoy the younger heroines. You you mentioned Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, I had people ask me, you know, I, people just say outright, oh, I have no idea why those moms like Twilight. I'm like, are you kidding? Yeah. Do you not understand why w- that women love going back to first love? Right. You know, when before you had any baggage or any made any mistakes? Yeah. I mean, how... And everything that- was so new and exciting and even your misery was good, you know? Exactly. And then to find the right person at that stage, oh my gosh. It's, yeah. it, it is, it's the ultimate fantasy in some ways. But it's also, you know, I, I, it's, it would be like having a diet only of cheeseburgers. I really like having my heroines be at different stages in their lives because... Well, and you know what's funny? Can I just like explain? Yeah. I was doing a giveaway around the holidays and um, I'm very... I'm actually kind of social media shy, meaning that I'm an entertainer. So if I'm feeling sad or I've got, you know, issues going on, I don't want to like bring that to my social media. Uh-huh. So I'll, I'll withdraw and just kind of be radio silent for a couple of days till I get my mojo back or whatever. Uh-huh. So what happened was I'm running this contact, uh, contest when the, you know, attacks happened in Paris. And that would be one of those situations where I would take a few days to reflect and mourn and try to get my hope back for humanity. But I couldn't because I I had to post something about this contest, right? Mm. So it was the total package, like, gratitude contest. And I, I had listened to my assistant, who at the time was like 20, you know, her mid to late 20s. And she told me that I should ask for the question, because, you know, you ask a question and then everyone responds and that's how you pick your winners. Right. And um, I had asked for the question to be, um, you know, what would be the movie you would watch to Netflix and chill? Mm. Now, I don't know if you know the lingo. <laughs> like, it made me feel so old because I started getting my readers who were writing to me and going, Stephanie, you want to check out what Netflix and chill means. Apparently, in young person lingo, Netflix and chill me is like the code word for you're supposed to pick the crappiest movie you can think of because you're really hooking up for casual sex. (laughs) And I was doubly sad because... Not only did I not know this, and I thought I was so hip and cool, but I'm clearly not. But more than that, it was actually, a, like, I, I was too old to actually participate. Like, I I almost wanted to say, yeah, well, that's the still the question I want to ask. But the fact is that, like, I'm out of that age group now. Yeah. 
So I had to change it to the lesser known uh, Netflix and Maps. <laughs> which was a little bit better. But it was kind of, you know, I was sort of sad at the same time because I, I would want to pick a movie to Netflix and chill with, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, I had I had not heard that one. I mean, I get it. It's Yeah, of course, you put on something you don't care to watch so that you can do something but, else. But, you know, Stephanie Meyer, you know, from Twilight could have said it, you know, but I can't. Like, that's not my reader base. no. I have to be aware of that. And you know what? I, I I didn't feel terrible. Like, you know, womp, womp. All right. I'm a little. Yeah, exactly. It's like, whoops, that one went past me. (laughs) Here, you know, Howard the Duck would be my Netflix and show. Oh God. Remember that movie? I (laughs) do. And, and, and the character appears in Guardians of the Galaxy. I had to explain it to the children. (laughs) They're like, what's with the duck? I'm like, oh, you need to know about the duck. (laughs) Considered. One of the worst movies ever made. The only way to watch it is drunk. Poor Leah Thompson. Yeah. She's like the really young is. chick who's got Howard the Duck. Yeah. Well, be- talk, about a, talk about a guilty pleasure. Yeah, exactly. Well, before my music jumps on, I am going to thank Stephanie, not only for staying up, but for joining us. Oh, I hope I can do this again. Yes, please. I would love that anytime, any place. And of course, when this next book comes to fruition. Join us, join us, join us. Thank you again. Thank you for tuning in to the O Spot here on Ohm Times Radio. For Stephanie and myself, I'm Rachel Kenley. Good night. Good night. <laughs>